Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate Saga with SCS. And here we are done with the circus, and kind of a uh, really early quest. And uh, also a couple of things that I kind of forgot to mention, and now we are actually have the time to to calmly uh, talk about this, is that um, Mikala of course mentioned a couple of times during his conversation when he was dying, that um, you know th this was not the outcome that he was promised. Uh, so. And also Jahira mentioned that, um, you know, the source of his power, uh, how he was able to, like, pull off such a strong illusion, is going to always remain a mystery. And now there is a mod called Unfinished Business that I'm sometimes mentioning, um, or that I sometimes mention, um, and that provides a component that uh, allows you to have a follow-up to this quest for Kala, where you can actually discover, like, what he was promised and how he was kind of tricked, and... Um, how he got the source of his power like that. So I'm not going to spoil it for you if you want to go for that, but I just wanted to take a second to talk about this subject because in my opinion like not everything has to be explained, especially if it's just kind of like a small side quest. Um, it, it actually, um, you know, it, it's cool to have here and there some some things that kind of remain a mystery and you can formulate your own theories and suspicions about what happened. And it's just not everything has to be explained, in my opinion. It's okay to leave some things like that uh, to be unexplained directly. Also, another example of that is a creature later on, later on called Torgal uh, is going to refer to its master uh, by just calling him Stronger. And we never get a direct answer uh, on like who Stronger is exactly. And again, we can have our own suspicions and theories, but we are never provided like a blunt answer. To that question, and that's okay, you know. Yes, it will anyway, be just after this little thing, let's talk to Hannah well met and welcome. for a very small amount of experience, and she's going to be able to go back to her son outside. I think you have this worker here who says that she laughed at Kala. Hello there. I think there's uh, a couple of these like. Circus workers have a couple of different lines. Yeah, I love it, Kala, along with everyone else, but I never thought it would come to this. Well, next time, I guess, think again before you ridicule someone. <laughs> Alright. So we can inform the guard that we've dealt with the problem, and uh, he's not really going to provide any help, uh, like, no matter what we ask here. So, yeah, we got plus one reputation for that. Good things here. All will remember the heroes that are Minsk, and Boo, and you. Yeah, we're going to set up great examples. And of course, <laughs> he has a pretty funny line here. Okay. And we can also talk to the boy for another Yay. measly amount of uh, experience. And we know that everything uh, yes. ended up. What is it without doubt? Like, well, we had a good outcome for that family. And also, Harold and Mrs. Harold are going to and be happy. Be? I'm just going to quickly teleport Sinashira there to inform this guy as well about our success. He's overjoyed. He actually leaves. Uh, anyway, also, one thing that I wanted to do is I forgot to sell these rings on Jahira. So I'll just quickly unequip them uh, as I'm thinking about it. And also, there's kind of a cool character, like an elf. Uh, or like an anti-elf racist character here, and that's uh, going to bother us uh, whenever we have kind of an elven character in our uh, in our party. And this is going to actually uh, end up in hostilities with certain characters, yes. but here it, it should be fine. Yeah, one of the vilest race of elves. So this is going to be about Jahiram. Yeah, you elves with your arrogant pride. And he actually has some, some good points, you know, I agree with him. I hate elves. <laughs> Generally, <laughs> or maybe not hate, but I dislike them. It de depends on how they are, um, you know, presented. But in Baldur's Gate 2, we will have plenty of reasons to just hate elves later on in the game, <laughs> just seeing their attitude. Yeah, and we elves have reason to be proud. We are an old race, far older than you. So what, Jahira? Stop annoying me. And you're only a half elf, by the way. So, you know, you can't really take credit there. You're not a pure breed. <laughs> Anyway, I just want to... Yeah, Elven Harlot. Yeah, there's another one. I, I have nothing to wish. Oh, he, th that's just the gen generic... Yeah. 
the response about the vile elves. All its people and their accumulated wealth, yes? Yes, Yoshimon. Nothing's worse than a cheating cold. And he's also going to, like, be mean to Eri. Although Eri is actually basically the antithesis of an elf. She's not pr uh, not proud at all. She's very humble and shy and very, like, good-natured. There's also a, a basic storekeep here that just has, like, basic non-magical equipment. Anyway, now it is time to progress, and as you can see, in Athkatla we only have the option to go to the slums, but th that's uh, just to progress the story a little bit, and um, very, very soon we will be able to go to uh, anywhere we want. You'd be the one I'd be looking for, if I'm not the mistaken. So yeah, here's Galen Bale, a character that I mentioned some episodes ago. Uh, I love the character and <laughs> and his uh, signature line here, like, Coo! <clears throat> uh, Anyway, and that's why I also mentioned that that's, that that's a theory that he was present in the cutscene where Irenicus just destroyed the, the bunch of Shadow Thieves there, because he, as you can see, he's dressed up in brown here, in brown colors, and uh, not in black. So maybe that was just a different thief that uh, ran away and brought uh, news to the rest of the Shadow Thieves about what happened. It's not what I want, but what I can be doing for you. So yeah, apparently he has uh, information about Imoen. Well, bless me for being an idiot if I haven't gone and forgotten my manners. Uh, my name be Galen Bale. You needn't stretch your brain thinking. I'd be sure it's a name you haven't heard. Oh, Yoshimo heard a little bit about him. Apparently uh, he is a man with some connections. You be a different matter. You be renowned enough that someone might be willing to find this Imuin for you, or maybe this wizard who held you. Either way, they both went to the same place. So how do you know all this? Cool. I know it's very little myself. I can, however, link you up with a group that knows, or can be finding out. This be not the best place to hold such a dialogue. I be having a place that would suit far better. It'd be just a short walk from here. Sounds totally like a trap, but it isn't. Why don't I take you there right now? Unless you have some reason for not wanting to come along. And the next time he says his cool <laughs> line, it's going to be the, the best one. He's going to be so happy about us uh, agreeing to come with him. Cool! Come with me then! <laughs> I love this one. Coo! Coo! It's good to be seeing you once again. <clears throat> I, have, I have some problem with my throat here, but can't really imitate his, his line. Although I, I really want to, every time he says it, I want to be like, Coo! But <clears throat> somehow it's not working out. Anyway. Now, tell me what uh, all this is about. Aye, I'll be doing that as quick as ye blink. I'll tell ye straight that I know a powerful group that can be helping ye. They can be finding a wizard and a young woman, both they can. Whoa. That's nice. But they can be doing far better than the telling, my friend. They can also affect a rescue of your last to boot. That sounds almost too nice. Just, what is this organization anyway? And he will not tell us... Uh, directly, but um, apparently it's a powerful organization with enough power to challenge even the cowled wizards. Uh, so we can kind of, you know, it's not a big spoiler, of course, uh, that he's connected to the Shadow Thieves, and uh, he's where, where he's going to kind of like, uh, well, he's not going to refer to it right now, but uh, you know, it, it becomes apparent soon enough. And of course, we've already heard that pretty much the only other powerful organization in the city, aside from the Cowled Wizards, are the Shadow Thieves. So yeah, it's, he says that it's going to cost us 20,000 gold uh, to to obtain the services of that group. And in order to kind of progress the uh, conversation, we have to say that, uh, how am I supposed to raise such a fare? So he's going to suggest, of course, us being adventurers that probably held such amounts before, and that we can uh, find plenty of work in the city. And yeah, so I'll be back with the money. And uh, he mentions Bros. He's uh, a boy that's going to direct us to the next kind of uh, quest. That, that's the only direction that the game provides us with. He's going to basically suggest a quest 
and depending on her class, so he mentions Malia, and that she might have some work for a fighting woman like yourself, because we're a Kensai, so he suggests this quest of Nalia's, because uh, he's going to basically direct us to the stronghold quest that's appropriate for our class. So in Baldur's Gate 2, every class can obtain a stronghold, uh, kind of, you know, fit for, for their class, and uh, he's always going to direct us, you know, to that to that stronghold quest appropriate to our class. Very well. And uh, Leitenan, he mentions here, he's the uh, proprietor, I guess, of the uh, Copper Coronet. The deal is made, and you have a goal, albeit a distant one. Your new friend has assured you that passage to Imoan can be bought. Though you are certain the final tally will include much more than gold. Any help is welcome, however. And while the cost may be steep, your path is clear. Finding Imuin will lead to Irenicus and to answers long overdue. These are the prisoners from the disturbance at Joaquin's promenade. What is known? Not but their names. The mage is John Irenicus. The girl is Emoin. I didn't do anything. He did it all. I had... Silence, child. Allow the fool to make his judgment. Why was this man not gagged? Did he not slay four of you? We dared not approach. Uh, regardless, in the end, he came willingly. What should be done with them, sir? They are deviants. Let them rot in spell hole. Uh, regardless, <laughs> in the end, he came willingly. So we are already in chapter two now, but th this is basically, you know, the the entry stages of the game where th the story progresses quite far, and I think we're going to progress to chapter three, uh, uh, not quite far, quite uh, quickly, I mean. And we're going to progress uh, to chapter three very soon, I think, but we're going to stay in chapter three for a long, long while. That's going to be the longest of all chapters. Uh, yeah, that's all for Rishimo here. We can get some like really minor stuff from here, but we're going to go upstairs in a second. And there's going to be a notable fellow there. And quite a few things um, actually to explain on how we're going to deal with some some stuff. You know. Fleet of foot and all that. <laughs> Fleet of foot and all that. It's my favorite line of his, I think. <laughs> so Rishimo is going to be able to disarm these traps, but he's not going to be able to uh, pick these two locks. But uh, he is going to be able to in a second, with uh, how we're going to manage things. Can anyone identify that? Darts plus one. Be able to sell them for very little money. Anyway, here's our Lydrian. And he is a very uh, notable vendor, very notable merchant. Uh, he has some pretty good entry-level stuff, uh, some potions, some uh, plus one weaponry, a couple of scrolls and stuff. Also, these glasses of identification, they are very important. They allow you to cast Identify essentially three times per day. And uh, he has a gem bag, and uh, yeah, some... some uh, oh, also, the most important, these stealing supplies, <laughs> basically. Potions of Master Thievery, of course, that uh, buff up our pickpockets by 40% each, and potions of Perception that also buff up our pickpocketing by, by 20% each, and of course other different uh, uh, thief skills as well. So, and basically what we're going to do here, uh, a little explanation is uh, necessary here. Uh, so basically this is pretty much as early as you can go on a really, really big uh, stealing spree, because you can uh, invest in those stealing supplies, and with Yoshimo, uh, you know, being your thief, that's always available, of course, to pick up in uh, Irenicus's dungeon, uh, we can use him to buff up his uh, pickpocketing to pretty much, like, the, the max, a very high amounts, uh, and then just go from merchant to mer merchant and just steal everything that they have, and that would be like the most optimal way uh, of going uh, with this, I guess. But uh, I am going to go with a little bit of a 
more toned down option, I guess, a little bit more reasonable kind of balanced approach to, to the stealing. So I am going to go uh, for these stealing supplies because it, it would be like so suboptimal to have to like, you know, buy some of this stuff from him and then just like come back later uh, to get some, some other things. Um, but yeah, I am, I am going to invest into these stealing supplies and I'm going to steal from him and the scroll vendors in uh, Joaquin's Promenade. But I am not going to steal from anyone else for now. Uh, there are different merchants, like the different potion merchants in the bridge district, for example, or in the temple sewers. There's Roger Defense, of course, with an amazing assortment of potions. Uh, there are also the different uh, kind of armor vendors and the Fletcher and Joaquin's Promenade, of course, uh, that has like 80 arrows of dispelling and all that stuff. And you basically, you know, I'm not, I'm basically going to go with like a very much toned down approach for now. We are eventually going to steal with, uh, from like many, many uh, different vendors, but uh, I am not going to do it just yet because of pretty much two reasons. Uh, first of all, well, the first reason isn't really a strong one because I was about to say that it would make the early game uh, too easy, but it really with SCS it isn't that much of a case you know with SCS we are going to be able to uh, we are going to need the different supplies and different tools in our arsenal and um, with SCS with the max kind of installation that I have you shouldn't really be feeling bad about stealing all this stuff uh, because you know SCS is going to present us with like different pretty ridiculous ob obstacles sometimes and um, so th but that's kind of reason number one that the, the very very early stuff I guess would would be um, quite a bit easier, I guess, if you uh, steal like absolutely everything going from merchant to merchant and, and whatnot. Uh, but the second reason uh, also uh, is important to me is that um, it basically kind of, um, you know, makes some of this uh, equipment, some of this loot just come too easy and too quickly for us. And uh, with that, we wouldn't really be able to ap appreciate the cool stuff that we get that we can loot after different encounters, like different early game encounters, like that Mithrest encounter, um, or not, not Mithras, the Seven Dales, I guess, uh, in Encounter, or the Temple Sewers Encounter, there's kind of like an adventuring uh, or like a mercenary group there. Uh, there. There's quite a few kind of early game encounters that uh, give you some nice entry-level loot, and, uh, you know, if you just steal, like, full plate males and, like, uh, shields plus two and stuff like that for, like, Jahira and Minsk um, from that armor... Uh, merchant in Joaquin's Promenade, then, you know, you, you won't really be able to appreciate the, the cool loot. You won't really be, um, you know, it won't really matter that much. So, uh, yeah, and it basically, like, cheapens kind of the, the experience uh, in the early game, in my opinion. But anyway, we're going to buy three of those, and we're going to buy, I think, all four of these as well. That's going to be our investment here. So we're going to transfer these to Yoshimo, and of course we have that one potion of Master Thievery from Erenicus's dungeon. Um, we're also going to recharge the wands. Oh yeah, that, that's another thing I wanted to cover. Uh, we are going to recharge these wands uh, by selling them to, to him and stealing them back, but I am not really going to use the wands yet. I am going to start using wands a little bit later. Uh, with maybe the exception of the wand of monster summoning, we might need one charge uh, in an ambush. Uh, the way I'm going to do uh, it, uh, I'm going to do it very, very early. So we might need uh, one charge of like monster summoning, I think, uh, maybe to you know summon some cannon fodder to provide a little bit of a distraction for our party. But I'm just going to do it because you know we can do it right now, and and we will need these ones a little bit later. But I'm you know I'm not going to abuse that. Uh, if you've watched my Baldur's Gate one playthrough, you know I'm not really uh, eager to like do broken stuff to like cheapen the the experience all right so he has 25 uh, starting pickpocketing skill and i am going to buff him up with i think uh, we're going to get 160 from the potions of um, master thievery but they last for a shorter amount of time so i want to buff him up with perception first so we're going to need basically like three perception potions i think and then the four master thievery potions you require my counsel, yes? Yeah, and then later on, like I said, we are going to do like a bigger stealing spree at some point later. But for now, just a moderate kind of toned down one, just to get some starting supplies. And just so we can get also some useful stuff, some convenient stuff like some bags and the, the 
glasses of identification and all that stuff uh, right away so that you know you don't need to like waste money and um, only have that available to us uh, way later oh by the way now he can open these there are some gems here I have some space Now this is the new wand. We're going to. Uh, it has more charges, so it's going to sell for more. But I'm not going to really use it. All right. So Yoshimo. Well, first, let's just sell some stuff that we have here. Uh, we are probably going to you know, sell this scimitar, these gems and whatnot. I am going to keep uh, like a non-magical version of uh, a kind of a useful weapon for fighting characters because um, of the magical protection buff that's uh, called protection from magical weapons. We've uh, been able to witness it being cast at the very very end um, in Baldur's Gate 1 in very very few encounters but it's going to be a prominent buff that opponents are going to use in uh, Baldur's Gate 2 so it's nice to keep handy a non-magical version of a weapon just to be able to hit enemies through that although they are mostly going to use stuff like mantle and stuff that's going to um, protect them even from non-magical weapons as well, but you know it's it's uh, a good kind of habit to have to have some non-magical weapons uh, on hand. All right, so now he has uh, 245 pickpockets, which basically uh, also one one thing about the thieving skills uh, in the classic game uh, after 255. Uh, you could go higher with uh, your skill, but basically the real value would kind of wrap around back to zero. Uh, it's kind of fixed in the enhanced edition. I did some tests uh, a while back, and you and it's kind of limited to how high can you go. Um, but I think if you buff up in a specific order, I think it goes to like 280, um, and then if you buff up the dexterity afterwards, I think I was able to get pickpocketing to like 320 skill or something like that. Anyway, the the bottom line is that you know it. Uh, this is basically a, such a high amount that we should only have like a 1% chance of failure that I don't think Enhanced Edition removes. So there's always, when it comes to thieving skills, uh, like uh, going into stealth or pickpocketing, there's always a 1% chance of failure, and if that happens for us, I am going to reload on that, because uh, the consequences of failing stealing are pretty big in most cases, like the, everyone is going to go hostile, and depending on where it happens, you know, it can be pretty dire. Uh, but the thing is that I'm, you know, I'm going for like minimum reloads, just like I did in, in Baldur's Gate 1, and I'm never going to like attempt these situations in like a risky way, so I'm always going to fully buff up pickpocketing to give myself the maximum uh, chance of succeeding, so we don't rely on saves. It's just like if really bad luck happens, and we would really suffer as a consequence of that, I am going to reload. So I'm going to quick save here, and Yoshimo is going to to steal some stuff after we empty his inventory. No Alright, finally. I also, I can uh, showcase further, you know, the nerfs to projectiles. The arrows plus two don't have any bonus to physical damage. The acid arrows actually do have plus one physical, but they, uh, the arrows of fire and arrows of ice uh, completely lost the physical bonus. And, uh, of course, acid arrows, uh, you know, nerfed from 2d6 acid damage to 1d3. So from 2 to 12 acid damage just to 1 to 3. It, that's a massive nerf. Uh, still, probably like the best arrows in uh, for, from these like different uh, kind of basic types. Arrows of piercing, I think, technically do more damage because they were kind of unnerfed, but they allow for that save. So it depends on uh, you know whether opponents make the, their saves or not. I'm just going to take myself one stack of arrows plus two and one stack of acid arrows. We're not really going to need anything more than that. I think I'm. Well, just uh, just when we're here, maybe. I was thinking about the bolts, but meh. I'm going to take the bullets. Bullets are kind of in the in the best like unnerfed state because they retain their um, physical damage uh, bonuses. And there's actually in Baldur's Gate 2 there's quite a few cool types of bullets. So slings are are a cool weapon, and you can get some powerful slings in Baldur's Gate 2. It's generally a, a cool cool thing. I'm I'm going to get this amulet of protection, I guess. The wand of frost we don't need. The oils of speed, I might, I might get the the two that he has. I'm going to get some more healing potions. We're going to definitely need those. 
in those very early stages of the game. Maybe even that potion of 22 strength. Now, I'm not going to get the armors and stuff, like I said, you know, not to cheapen the, the loot that we're going to get a little bit in the, into the future. Um, I am going to just get the scimitar plus one for uh, Kirinai. And that's basically it. I think I'm not going to go overboard with that. I'm, I'm going to get this comp composite longbow for Minsk, maybe, but he's not really going to make much use of that and the sling for Jahira. Uh, now we're also going to get the gem bag, of course. That's going to be very, very useful. And the glasses of identification. And since we're here... Uh, do you have space? Uh, I am going to get a couple of these restoration scrolls so we can just have them uh, already. And I'm going to get this improved invisibility because it's a good spell. And now these other things I, I could take, but like I said, I don't want to really go overboard and uh, get stuff that we don't really need. Oh uh, yeah, Yoshimo. So now we have a gem bag. That's very nice. We can get these bullets, give these bullets to Jahira, and give this sling to Jahira. And now we have more potions. We have these oils of speed that are going to be useful. We have this potion of strength that Sanshira is going to hold on to for now, I guess. We can... Oh yeah, he, she has the Mail of the Dead, so let Minsk have this amulet for now. Minsk can have this bow. Uh, Kirana is going to have this scimitar plus one, which is going to serve her well. This we're going to have in our scroll case. This we're going to have in a separate scroll case. We're going to have like these utility kind of green scrolls and the scrolls of restoration. Like uh, th that's the cool thing about Baldur's Gate 2 and the different um, like multiple copies of different containers that you can have. You can really organize your loot um, by just having in like a separate scroll case. In my case, uh, I have a separate one. Uh, with like different scrolls of protection and restoration and resurrection, all that kind of stuff. And we can have these, uh, I guess, on Senoshira, these glasses. Okay, now we're going to recharge the wands, and that's pretty much going to be everything that we're going to do with our Ledrian here. So we're going to sell these to him for one gold, and now Yoshimo is going to just take them back in their recharged form. And that Wand of Frost, please. Alright, there it is. Okay, they're still unidentified, but now they have... Oh, he actually <laughs> first uh, st stole the, the Wand of Frost that he had on, on sale. But anyway, it's okay. We can have eight charges on that. We're going to identify this Wand of Monster Summoning by using the, our glasses. So now it has 50 charges. And all of these ones are going to have 50 charges. And I think we're going to identify this one and maybe Cloud Kill we're going to leave for later. We're not going to make it so, uh, make, uh, it so easy for ourselves, I guess. We're just going to get the Lightning Wand and the Fire Wand. Uh, actually, on the Lightning, yeah, it says here that there are six Lightning Bolts of 3d6 electrical damage, save for half. And uh, yeah, you can select a separate target for each of these Lightning Bolts. So it's a very cool wand. Very useful, actually, in some situations. Speed. All right, and that's it for now. So, oh, actually, we can pickpocket from Very him directly. Well. I have made something mine and none other wiser. All right, so, actually, a potion of freedom, nice. Another potion of invisibility and a healing potion, very nice. Yes, certainly. And actually, I think we're not going to visit a fence for a while, so I'm just going to drop that, Without doubt. that necklace. Okay, and here's Bruss, uh, the boy that's going to take us to the Copper Coronet if we want to. So, yeah, let, let him bring us there. And this is basically as far as the game is going to guide us. This is where the game just lets go of our hand, and uh, now the game like truly begins, <laughs> in that sense. That now we are able to go anywhere, do anything, basically just go back to the standard, very open Baldur's Gate formula. Alright, first we're going to he here do a little encounter. Speak without hesitation. Out of my way! You there! Calm down, Corvail. Calm down, Corvail. Mr. F don't like you killing people in the streets. Shut your mouth, dwarf. As for you, I said get your stinking hide out of my way! So we're going to provoke them and kill them. 
That's a little encounter there. We're going to get rid of the thief here. He's going to should die pretty easily. We're going to get more throwing daggers for Kiranai soon. No, they, of course, because of SCS, they have some pretty good uh, potions. He actually has a potion of power, Bregg. So let's get rid of him quickly. All right, nice. And then Corveil. You can see that the health pools in Baldur's Gate 2 are quite a bit higher. So these guys are not going to be dying so quickly, but, you know, this is just a minor encounter. Okay, they have some stuff. And we are actually able to... Oh, wow. And random drops Fear of Chaos. A level 7 spell. Nice. 7,000 experience for us once, once we uh, scribe it into our spellbook. Uh, also, we were able to get a potion of invulnerability. Very nice. Off of... Uh, Corveil. And uh, now my plan... Oh yeah, standard... Uh, standard um, banter with uh, Jahira. And she just warns us about some people that might know about our origins as a ch child of Baal and that might want to use us. So yeah, always remember what you are and that you may be tested from time to time. Right, anyway, just like I said, we're going to go straight back to the promenade, get, uh, get some goodies from there. And then I have a certain plan that I'm going to explain afterwards. So, we're going to go just quickly... Oh yeah, I forgot to show this Engay's shop. NG, 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 however you pronounce his name. He's actually pretty fun, pretty funny guy. That's a voice line I like. Some merchants have like, Kalamshites, Tetherians, Waterdavians. <laughs> anyway, you are looking for something, yeah? Do you be needing assistance, yeah? Uh, <laughs> Come and see. I will be showing you everything. You'll be liking NG knows. Very well, show me everything. <laughs> Uh, uh, good. We be having much fruit, yes? Anyway, he, he just doesn't have anything interesting. Although you can steal this large shield plus one from him, I guess. Speak, yes, it uh, will he be has fun. some like very, very minor treasures here. I just wanted to showcase like a fruit shop with a funny talking guy. Not going to take these bolts plus one. What is it? Alright, above Sir? there is... By the way, uh, also, I haven't been really looting these containers. They are all empty. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, everything's uh, cleared out on the promenade, I guess, on these stands. Anyway, above here there's a there's a shop with um, the armorer, Arnolinus, and the Perter, the, the Fletcher. So I'm just going to show that off, I'm not going to steal from them, but we can, with buffed up Yoshimo skills, we can actually open some stuff uh, so that um, we can get some experience, because uh, this one is locked as well. Alright, so we're, I can just show you that um, like, he has some pretty good armors, and uh, you could, uh, like, immediately steal that from him. So, um, you know, he has, like, large shields plus two. That would increase uh, the armor class on Jahira by quite a lot. And also, giving full plate, he actually has two copies of that. So, Jahira and Minsk could both get a full plate mail right away. But I'm not going to do that. And also, from uh, Perter, uh, we're going to get some throwing daggers. I am actually going to buy them. Let's get, like, um, three stacks. He has different, like, types of arrows. As you can see, arrows of fire, they don't have the physical damage component, and only 1d2 fire damage, and there's a save versus spell. So, yeah, much, much worse. At least arrows of ice also don't have a saving throw, but also 1d2 cold and no physical damage bonus. Uh, and, yeah, he has these two stacks of 40, so 80 arrows of dispelling in total. We are going to steal them at some point later. But uh, not yet. He also has an ammo belt because that was added by the uh, BG2 Tweaks component that I have. And um, ammo belt, normally we would have to go to level 1 Watcher's Keep, which is not a big deal uh, to get an ammo belt. But I really like these additional ones because normally there's just one ammo belt in the game. And if I had, uh, like in, in our case, it's not going to really matter. But if you have some uh, shooting characters... It's good to have like two different ammo belts so that you can uh, organize your your uh, ammunition. So like you have you can have one ammo belt for arrows, for example, and the other one for like bolts and sling bullets or something like that. 
I I want to take it since we're here. Well, let's just let's just take it already, and I guess Yoshimo might might uh, hold on to it for now. Uh, but yeah, these these proper arrows I'm going to keep on Sinashira for now, just so we know that we have some good arrows there. And now we're going to proceed to the Adventure Mart. We're going to see what's up there, but I am noticing that we're kind of getting over time here. Don't even think about trying to steal something, this guard says. And I'm going to steal directly from him. <laughs> How do you like that, bro? 29 gold. Okay, so there's a couple of conversations that we can have here, a couple of different merchants, and you know what, because, yeah, there's quite a few things to do here, and, uh, yeah, we have so much to do, now Now that the game really, like, started, there is so much to do, you can do so many different things, go so many different routes, do different encounters, do, like, recruit different characters, ah, there's so much things to do and plan. The theory crafting aspect, I think I might have mentioned that sometime before, but I really enjoy also the theory crafting, like planning out the playthrough of uh, Baldur's Gate, because there's so many variables, so many options. It's, it's amazing. Anyway, I'm going to finish this episode right here. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm going to see you in the next one.